I'm Don Nelson. Here are your top headlines. The Idaho Innocence Project is helping lawmakers with a bill that would give financial compensation for those who have been wrongfully convicted in Idaho. It's inspired by the case of Christopher Tapp, the Idaho Falls man who wrongfully spent more than 20 years in prison for the 1996 rape and murder of Angie Dodge and was later exonerated due to DNA evidence. Idaho is one of just 15 states in the country that offers no compensation to the wrongfully convicted once they have been released. Potential employers will check their record. The records aren't uh, erased just because you're exonerated. You have to petition for that. It takes time. They can't get housing. Nobody wants to rent to a convicted murderer or rapist. And um, all of that takes time to correct. The compensation gives them a chance to get their lives back on track. The bipartisan bill was introduced Wednesday by Republican Representative Doug Ricks and hearings will commence next week. The dollar amount that the person would receive under this bill was not disclosed, but Hampikian says compensation for the wrongfully convicted of federal crimes often amount to about $50,000. Last month, Tapp filed an intent to sue the Idaho Falls Police Department to get reparations after his two decades in prison. The future of one of the biggest entertainment properties in the Valley still up in the air. Uh, the Boise Dev blog reports that Ada County Commissioners are working to assemble a citizens advisory panel to help decide what to do with Expo Idaho, which includes the Boise Hawk Stadium and the now defunct Le Bois horse racing track. All at premium real estate prices, candidates for the citizens panel attending a town hall tonight at the event center on the 240 acre property. There's endless options here, uh, keeping, keeping things the way they are. Uh, there's options for, for housing, there's options for retail, there's options for you know, entertainment venues and, and all sorts of things. Like I said, it's a, it's a really nice piece of real estate and to be able to talk about its potential uh, is certainly something we want to be engaged in. Commissioners say they will vote to select candidates for the advisory committee next Wednesday and will use their recommendations as well as public input to guide their future decisions. And for many folks, this Sunday is all about sitting, eating and watching the big football game. So why not get a little exercise on Saturday and take the kids to the zoo? Admission is free from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Sue Boise says it's a way of saying thank you for community support. The theme is wild at heart. And you can watch the animals, enjoy Valentine's related gifts and plenty of activities. And just a heads up, it's expected to be a busy day, so parking could be a little tricky. Now, Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval with the On Your Side forecast. Another mild day today with that sunshine with temperatures above average. It really felt nice for a while. Then the cloud cover came right back in after hitting 46, 48 in Ontario. Still in the 20s and 30s in the mountains after seven inches of snow in McCall yesterday. A little drier with some sunshine trying to develop. It looks like more snow is coming in. In fact, it won't be long. Doppler radar showing moisture streaming in from the west. It will increase this evening. It will come overnight under the cover of darkness and then it will be gone when you wake up tomorrow in the Treasure Valley. That whole frontal system will move through. We'll break into some sunshine. Everything will be wet. Should stay above freezing. I don't expect the black ice we had this morning in the valley, but one to three inches of snow likely in the uh, central mountains overnight tonight. Here is my valley extended forecast for tomorrow afternoon. Looks nice after rain tonight, 47 degrees and partly cloudy. And then Friday, you may have a couple clouds in the morning. We'll break into the sunshine. The temperatures will soar to the 50s and Friday afternoon looks really, really nice. And Saturday, the same story. Mild conditions quickly warming into the 50s. Some places could come close to 60 degrees, but then a cold front comes through Saturday night with the rain showers could even change over to a burst of some snow showers on Sunday morning. So a 16 degree temperature drop from Saturday to Sunday. And then look at these low temperatures now dropping down to the lower 20s instead of the upper 30s on Saturday. So colder air mass coming in for the beginning of next week as we go into February and then even some snow. We might have snow on the ground Wednesday morning before it melts later in the day. There's another update for you. Uh, I'll have another update coming up here. Just stay tuned right to this location.